What's up, Liron here. Today we're gonna learn how to paint this scene. Now the reference photo, which I will share in the description box below, is one of those magical reference photos that are just meant for painting. You're gonna see lots of clear large shapes, strong interesting contrasts, a lot of details, so this is just a painting begging to be done. Uh, so with that being said, let's get started. We'll get started with the drawing stage and uh, the composition here and everything is rather simple. And what I'll try and do, and I don't usually do this, is simplify. Um, a lot of you have been uh, talking to me about Tim Wilmot's tutorials here, and I love Tim's work. Um, I actually am a big fan uh, of his uh, videos, tutorials, painting processes. Um, and so uh, I'm going to try and kind of imitate his approach on this one. So very few lines. Uh, and this is a trajectory I've been on in any case, so it'll be nice to kind of work on improving that skill of myself, um, of using fewer lines to convey uh, the details. So here we have this kind of a reverse L shape. This is going to be a big contributor uh, to the composition and the perspective. We have another rooftop. Uh, it may not end up looking uh, as, as, as good as I can because I am trying something a little new here. Notice how I'm simplifying everything to just uh, silhouettes or outlines or whatever you want to call that kind of uh, way of drawing. Uh, but hopefully it'll still uh, end up working out nicely. So here we have that building in the center. It goes kind of like that with uh, the roof over here. Then this recedes into the distance due to perspective. We have this split between the roofs. We have a chimney here, a really big chimney, in fact. And then this line goes kind of to the bottom here and it meets this line here. This building goes like that. And it actually connects to the other buildings here. I'm just gonna connect this area, probably will kind of wing it. I uh, won't worry too much about it. There is this cast shadow, obviously, into this side of the painting. Um, the car that I do want to get because it is an interesting part I would say so it's somewhere around here and I'm just trying to draw its basic shape without getting too uh, distracted by um, useless details it's actually a rather easy car to draw because it's so boxy it really is like a box uh, in a way uh, so it's that's a bit easier it makes it a bit easier to draw so that's car. Now there is a person here and I kind of like it so I will keep it there so that's a person. That's a figure. You can barely see it in the distance. It's gonna be nice contrast with uh, the, this dark building at the back. We have this uh, light pole here or electricity pole or whatever. And it goes here with a very slight shadow. Connects wires like that. I will, I may change it up later on but this it's nice that these wires run towards us as well so who knows. Maybe I'll just add a few wires just for fun. Um, but I do want to put in some figures here. So because this is eye level, their heads are going to be about the same height, but their feet are going to end up somewhere around here. So maybe a little shorter, kind of like that, because compared to the car, they also should match the, pro the general proportions. So somewhere around here, that's for the head, that's for the feet, that's a head, that's a body, that's two legs, that's another person walking beside that first person and I may try uh, to do something interesting with maybe they have a like a bag maybe they bought some groceries cast shadows to the left and with that being said I think we're almost ready to paint I'm just gonna add some indication for where the windows are gonna be uh, where the, the doorway is gonna be behind them so that's irrelevant for now we have this tree here that I can just stick in there and, and hope it'll look good. This rooftop, some um, windows on the rooftop, this rooftop as well. I'll make this taller so that it doesn't obstruct the, this line. Kind of like this. Uh, we have two nice windows here. And I'm barely lifting my uh, pencil off the paper. A couple of windows here. And I think we're pretty much done and ready to go. Let's get started with painting this. So on to the painting process. Uh, and I think this is a great scene to just to work on in general uh, because it's such a beautiful scene and lots of clear shapes. Uh, so I'm going to start by mixing in just this blue. It's very clear, clean phthalo blue uh, and start covering the sky. Now, uh, it seems to me at least like the sky starts a little darker 
uh, and then gets a little lighter. So I'm covering it enough so that I have enough of a runway and then I'm starting to inject some stronger phthalo blue. What I'll do gradually from this point is start lightening it up, okay? Uh, and I, I will cover pretty much everything uh, that has to do with the sky, okay? Um, now, if you feel like you've lost some of it, that's fine. You can go back, like I may have lost some of it. I'm going to go back and just add a bit more paint, like so. And that's it. You don't want to... As soon as like you, you develop this sixth sense telling you when to stop, when you don't want to overdo anything. Uh, so in any case, covering everything up. Now we're getting to the buildings and the walls and everything. So I'll probably push, push, pull, <laughs> I forgot uh, what, what word I wanted to use. Probably pull this part down. Uh, and then I'm going to start with a bit of a warmer wash. So I'm going to use my peril in red here for the rooftops. A very classical, very common approach for me uh, of doing this. So I'm putting in the red and I'm allowing it to blend with everything really. I don't mind that as much. Uh, but what I will try and do and produ is produce a bit of a pure red. And then I'm just going to pull this downwards and start introducing some yellow. Okay, this is how I like to do a building's walls. It's kind of my autopilot way of doing it. Um, now everything here is going to be so um, well blended together and, and so light that it won't matter as much in terms of... Uh, we're going to make the separation between the shapes later on. So you don't have to worry about that too much, which is the fun part of watercolor painting, really, is that you can afford that first layer to be quite a mess, if, if you think about it, if you look at it. I'm going to add all of the colorful... Um, there is a lot of colorfulness to the, the buildings themselves, the walls. Uh, this wall is actually a little blue, so I'm just going to put that in right now, allow this to kind of mingle and, and blend. But then I'm going to warm it up uh, with the closer buildings. This is, I think, really important. It will provide us with a sense of uh, light. Now, I don't want to overdo it and use too many colors, so I'm going to cut uh, most of it right now. I'm going to just keep a bit of a highlight on the top of the car here, which I don't normally do, but this time it feels right. I'm going to keep that highlight. Um, Perhaps also on this edge, so I'm gonna uh, darken this area up. And there are these people. I'm gonna carefully paint around at least some of them, really, like so. And just leave a couple of highlights on them, and then take the wash down with me to the street level. This guy I can actually paint over. Doesn't matter. Now I'm going to start introducing some uh, blue here so that I create a gray for the shadow mixture. Um, and where there is light, I will put some reds and yellows. Now this looks like a big mess right now. Don't worry, it's going to be nice uh, and, uh, and interesting, I think. Um, the more we will add layers and cre start creating those separations and those shapes. Now I do feel like it has to be a little stronger here in the foreground. Um, not here, because here's going to be a major shadow. Also here, actually, because uh, I do want some of the warmth uh, to shine through. So I will put some red here, like so. But a bit here, on the actual sunny part of the street, I always feel like my foregrounds end up being a little too light, so I think this will really help bring out the shape. Um, create a sense of light, a good sense of light. So a bit of this, a bit of that. And with that, we're pretty much done with the first wash, okay? We're gonna let this uh, dry for a while and then come back and continue. It's gonna be a beautiful painting. I have a feeling we're gonna start with the shadows and work our way around it. Um, uh, one last thing, actually, and I know I always do this, uh, I'll just strengthen, now that the some of the paint is uh, starting to settle, I will add just a bit of warmth to this rooftop and this rooftop as well because I feel like we lost some of that uh, maybe also here possibly it's just that while it's still wet you can do so much so it's a good idea to to take advantage of that and I sometimes forget to so uh, so anyway here's for the chimney as well and with that being said we'll let it dry
So moving on with the painting process, um, now it's time to start adding in some shadows. And the way I'm gonna tackle this, and it's really important to plan these things out, is I'll probably cover all of this area and connect it to this wash. So a lot of areas here are gonna be connected. Uh, this is, I think, the best way to do it. Uh, the best way to uh, create paintings that look harmonious. This is my personal taste. Uh, so I'm mixing in this mixture. I don't want it to be too striking. Uh, I actually want it to be a little grayed out. Uh, because first off, that's the way Tim Wilmot does it. And if he does it that way, I'm going to do it that way. Uh, but second, more on a s more serious note is because those are buildings at the back, okay? So I don't really care about them popping too much. So I'm going to start here and we'll try it out. So this seems perhaps a little too light. Okay, I'm not sure. I'm going to add a bit of blue to that and we'll see what happens. Uh, so that's going to be where the rooftop starts. And it's a beautiful scene. This is really one of those magical scenes that you don't get that often. That just were built for a painting. It's, it's really incredible. Um, and I'm holding the brush a little close to the tip because I do want to get a little more control. Uh, because I am using a rather large brush. Reason for that, just because I want to. And I want to um, I wanna use uh, a bit of a larger brush here so that I don't have to fill in uh, areas really slowly. That's how I like to do it. Uh, now it's important here to pay attention attention to some of the shapes. I do want to show the edge of this roof, uh, but I do have to paint around that uh, rooftop that is fairly lighter. So that's how it goes like that. Now here we do have that split in the rooftops and it is important for me to merge it with the existing wash. Okay. And I'm actually fine with this wash being quite light. I wasn't planning on initially, but now when I look at it, it looks really nice. And uh, who knows? We're gonna we're gonna give it a try. So I'm I'm carefully painting around all different different uh, parts of the buildings. This line should go like that, and then I'm gonna go to this right section. Uh, now here I actually want to green it out a little, so I'm gonna add a bit more uh, yellow and a bit more. Blue, if you look at the reference, it does seem to be a little more green. Uh, I'm going to make this part a little longer, like that. Now, while this is still wet, I'm going to go back and add a bit of thicker paint, just to get that nice little uh, wet and wet transition. It could be a little too early for that. Uh, but I'm going to go for it. We'll see what we get, like this. And I'm gonna have to probably soak out some of these. This puddle is a little too large, like so. And again, sorry if my narration isn't as clear as it could be. Uh, I just have to concentrate a little more. Now I'm gonna switch to uh, this smaller brush just for this side of the chimney here. I wanna do this already now because it is kind of merged. Um, so that's that. We do have a very strong shadow. I can make this a little darker later on, but I do want the very first uh, touch of red. Probably I can make this a little stronger. Put in this shadow of the chimney as well. And this kind of casts a shadow on the rooftop back here, like this. And I think with that we're kind of good to go. Now let's move on with this part of the wash. Rooftop here. I'm going to do some probably wet and wet as well in just a moment, but you have to always think about the negative shapes you're creating when you paint. Okay, so this will indicate the edge of this rooftop, and I actually want it to have an edge, so I'm going to make this wall a little more uh, on the inside, like so. Grab a bit of yellow, put it on there. I really like the green of that building. Uh, it's really nice. Now here I can negative paint around that pole. You know what, let's do that. Even though I don't always like to do these kinds of things that are very challenging, I'm gonna try and just negative paint around it, see what happens. Uh, hopefully you can see the nuances of the, of the actual colors I'm using, and if not, that's fine. You will see it later on, probably. Now here towards the bottom, it gets much darker. So let me just gather up some more paint and darken this spot significantly. I think it is important. Uh, also getting a bit of wet and wet here with some darker uh, blue right under this 
part like this and hopefully that effect will work now again I have to darken this bottom part um, a little bit more it's gonna dry much lighter actually so don't don't be scared especially if you're doing wet and wet don't be scared to go a little too strong uh, it's gonna be okay in most cases so now I painted around that now it's time to go back to some of that initial green here uh, like this I do need a little more yellow like so finish up that part on the right and you can already probably start seeing the shape of something now I'll probably merge these two at some point like this just for continuity's sake now here I'm gonna gray it out with a bit of red because this is a separate building and I actually want it to be a little more dull kind of like that this and I will merge it with this wash here to the side now this it's funny enough it has a hint of orange so I'll probably try a couple of things I'm gonna try a bit of an orangey feeling and this isn't the final wash of this wall uh, it's gonna be uh, probably darker it's gonna need some darker paint later on now but it is an important shape so I do want to get some of its complexities here like so uh, there are a couple of details here like shingles uh, it is important just to create some interest in that kind of a very close shape uh, that's very close to us now I'm gonna add a bit more red uh, this entire thing is in the shadow so I kind of forgot about that part uh, because I wanted to connect it so fast but in any case now this figure I'm gonna paint around it now it's time to leave a bit of a highlight and I am holding the brush a little closer than I tend to okay uh, I actually can paint some of that figure already I'm gonna hint at it not switching to a smaller brush insisting on staying with this uh, larger brush but hopefully that'll read well I'm just gonna make the head a little smaller like this connect it all to the right now near the bottom I can probably blue it out a little more like so and um, connect it here to this kind of wall this is all connected and these shadows will help ground us in the scene uh, in a, a better way I think hopefully now I'm gonna add this kind of shadow here uh, perhaps add a bit of details on it just to make it a little more interesting here we have a lot of details so it could be uh, laundry hanging to dry but these things really help balance out the wash so uh, it is important to include them the edges mean a lot for a painting so you want to make sure to have a variety of, of those edges especially in a shape that's again so close to us the viewer okay then we have this shape now notice how I'm using more blues and reds here um, to warm it up because the the ground is warm uh, the the areas that are closer to us tend to be a little warm and I wanted to get that effect uh, let's use now a bit of red here because I need I think it needs a bit darkening here as well if we can get away with this being the final shadow that'll be really good but I wouldn't count on that uh, specifically because we may need to add a bit more uh, to it but for now we got this the establishment of this right side of the painting now comes the interesting part in which we'll start establishing the shapes of these these rooftops now I will switch to a smaller brush that's enough of uh, tormenting myself uh, with tight negative painting uh, now here we have a bit of a neutral shadow on the right so I'm gonna try and kind of neutralize what I've got here and paint again very carefully um, and I can afford myself to connect it with this wash I'll, I'll just go for it and see what happens so here we have this nice little shadow shape this is actually beautiful I like these kinds of shapes um, it starts around here and then it goes a little down because of the window okay so we get it like this and this edge around here there's also a strong cast shadow like that so hopefully you can start seeing how the shape of the window starts to come to life now this part continues all the way to the bottom I'm gonna make it a little more red just for variety's sake like so connect the two and here we have some very interesting shadows I have to be a little careful with them so this 
part goes like this. But we do have these diagonal shadows. Now, I won't get it 100% right, uh, but hopefully I will get it somewhat right with all of these kind of diagonal lines. Um, we do have a very heavy shadow around here. Again, just working slowly, making my way slowly around the painting. That's the only real way of doing this kind of thing. Um, going around this rooftop, I think this entire part could be uh, painted. Now here we have another interesting diagonal shadow like this. And hopefully this brings out the shape of the rooftop again, like this. And here we have, I think, one of the most interesting shapes here. I'm gonna blue it a little bit, just gradually. And we have this very interesting shadow that goes kind of like that. And then there's a lot of, like, the edge of the roof has kind of holes in it, and that's that. Now I'm going to do some wet and wet while I can, so plenty of blue, plenty of red, a bit of yellow, and we're going to darken this uppermost section. In fact, I'm going to drag it all the way up to here, just darken it, being brave about it. That part is much, much darker, this part as well, this part probably as well. Now we can move on. Now this left wall is also quite green. So I'm just gonna get that green paint. Now here I have to be careful because we're getting to the people. Uh, so this is where the negative painting becomes a little more important. Probably here as well. I should stretch these due to the windows here. That's fine, like this. Hopefully that makes sense. A bit of wet and wet for the windows here as well. Uh, a bit of a dark shadow here and moving on. So this part is green, that part is going to be yellow, uh, painting around those people. I still am not so good with negative painting around people. I don't know why, it's still hard for me to visualize their shape. If you have any tips on that, I'll be happy to hear. Uh, but it is quite a challenge for me, this is the grocery bag, kind of like that. Now here I do want to smoothen that out just a bit, this edge. I feel like we have a lot of harsh edges, but here there is, it deserves this area a bit of a um, softer transition. Like so, continuing my way around these two figures, head, shoulder. Now I'm gonna uh, switch to a bit of a yellow. Okay, again, this wall on the right is a little yellow, probably a bit of red in it too, just to get it to be a little more orangey but it still is quite dark and it's important to get that darkness in here. Like so. I don't care if these two bleed, it's all in the shadow anyway, so that's fine. And with this kind of painting, the, the, like 90% of the, the job is gonna be done with this wash. I'm gonna gray it out near the edge here and just continue with this kind of line all the way to the left side. Whatever is in, in here, I'm just gonna get it. Uh, I do want this shape to be a little more accurate. I'm gonna add a very light wash later on there, but I do want to add the shadow under the building, so that's what we're gonna do now. So it's kind of casting in that direction, and it's somewhere around here, sharp edge, moving on to the right, and hopefully that reads well. Me, as the artist, it's a bit hard for me to tell how well you can tell what you're looking at, and if the impression is any good, uh, but hopefully you can. Um, there are a couple of windows on this wall to the left, so a bit of thick paint once again. I'm gonna get those in here, so one, that's two, and we, we will later on dry brush these, okay, so don't worry about that. And probably just touch the paint accidentally, smeared it all over, <laughs> so that's fine. Um, and then, again, I wanted some dry brush here, some uh, wet and wet, sorry. <clears throat> now these figures, I can actually paint them. I'm gonna leave this one with a white shirt maybe. Uh, so it's gonna be uh, that, but I'll just add a bit of red for the face. Okay, and it should be probably a bit of a dark red. Many days like this where it's a very strong sunlight, you tend to see people actually have this very orangey red face. like. Actually, this is what it looks like, which is very interesting. And uh, now I'm going to add this kind of cast shadow by the head to the left, like so. 
we're pretty much done with that person at least with the top section now the other person also gonna have a bit of an orange face and maybe a yellow shirt just to contrast it with the background so like so we'll let this all bleed together like this and we'll build the person on the right with the help of the person on the left so now you get this shape now I'm just gonna add some pants or whatever um, let's see and this figure I'll probably leave some kind of a highlight on this leg and then this one I will just get in one go like so a bit of a shadow here probably should be here now hopefully that makes sense the other figure as well I'm gonna just kind of connect this area and they're gonna cast a shadow ever so slightly to the left that's important to get as well hopefully that makes sense now this reminds me that I should probably close the gap here behind that person it's a bit of a risk but that's fine it's gonna work I'm gonna add maybe later on a bit of a uh, white paint or uh, you know white gel pen above this this figure's head just to make it a little more clear and I'll round this shape out uh, now we're gonna do the car so the car I want to actually use a bit of a let's try getting a bit of a mixture of ultramarine uh, if I have any left here I, I forgot to refill it that's fine let's use the normal blue maybe with a bit of red like so everything in the car should be darker except for the top part probably let's use a bit of a pure blue just to contrast it with all of these well blended uh, blues and colors I've been using so far so down here this is the back the under part of the car I'm gonna put in the tail lights in just a moment um, this part is more in the light actually so I'm gonna lighten it up a bit kind of do this very gentle shadow here on the bottom but then what's gonna happen is um, we're gonna need some very dark paint for the windows so for this part at the back we're gonna do it wet and wet for these windows at the front like so there's this the mirror here and then the tires as well so one tire here another tire there and also there's the the door handles like this and we're gonna connect it to a very dark shadow okay that's important because the shadow under the car is much darker than the actual car and this will help cement it in a way to the ground so kind of like that and hopefully you can very easily tell what you're looking at but we will add a bit of redness to it in just a moment so I'm just grabbing a lot of the peril in red and I'm gonna put it here and allow it to merge okay now we get the back side of the car uh, I do need to straighten out that window shape like this and probably there is a bit of a shadow here as well just to make it a little longer and I think with that we're done with the car as well uh, there is a bit of a detail of a sidewalk here that I didn't get but let's put it in here kind of like that bottom of this wall we're gonna add some more details in just a moment in um, kind of wet and wet fashion there's a shadow under this element here um, there is this tree let's add this tree and with that we'll wrap it up I'm gonna use uh, we'll wrap up this layer then we'll come back with another last one I'm gonna use a bit of a dull mix here almost uh, gray and with this tree we'll be able to bring out the shape of this rooftop here so that's uh, a bit of an important section and then drag it over get some of that dry brush effect and this is pretty much it I will um, merge it with this kind of area here uh, there's this rooftop here that's a bit small and gentle but I do want to get that now that we've established the shape in a lot of um, negative uh, painting we can fill it up 
uh, with a bit of a darker paint because this is going to end up a little too light I'm telling you right now trees are much darker than you think sometimes even when it looks like they're a highlight they're, they're actually a shadow sometimes uh, and then I will probably blend this edge here and hint at maybe a mountain maybe there's something in the background of the scene and that's it and that's that we will close this left section off cleanly and I think we're gonna allow this a few seconds to dry and then I'm gonna come back with some final details. So moving on, and I actually really like these kinds of paintings because uh, we will be able to finalize it with just this one next uh, layer. Uh, because they're rather straightforward, uh, there, is a lot of, there are a lot of clear shapes, there's a lot of just clear stuff, so that makes it much more fun for me. Uh, so we're gonna start with the small details. The only thing that's really missing right now is just things to pull this together and tighten it up. Uh, nothing too serious, but there's this uh, antennas here. I'm gonna start from this rooftop. Just a couple of details on it. Now notice how, because of the direction of the light, this side of the rooftop has a bit of that line going on. The other side also, but it's just so much more weak that I don't wanna really define it, okay? Um, you could add a bit of a detail here if you want to or something like that. Uh, just to bring out the shape, uh, you could also, and I'm just going to go for it and see what happens, add just a bit of a hint of some of the shingles, but not too well defined, kind of like that. So that's it. That's probably going to be the most detailed part of this rooftop. And moving on to the other one, and we're going to have some more striking details. Actually, with this one already, we have something a little more serious. So I'm going to grab a bunch of red paint here because that's, and a bit of yellow, because that's a very red and yellow kind of um, chimney that I completely missed, by the way, I just didn't see it. Could have put it in the in the previous uh, wash, but that's fine. Like so. Um, now I'm gonna do a bit of a wet and wet here, just because I think it should be a little stronger. And then this shadow right over here and with that we'll finish that part uh, and now I'm gonna go back maybe I'll just do this part in a bit more uh, red than blue like I did with this one so we do have again a bit of an indication of the outline of the rooftop that I do want to get here uh, on top of that chimney there are a couple of other details like this uh, antenna maybe it's behind it but I don't really care I'm just gonna put it in here like that Kind of like this. Uh, this part is also pretty well defined, so I'm gonna place that in like so. We do have that shape and in, in the back here that I'm, I'm just gonna use my rigor brush to put in. Maybe it's a chimney on the other side, maybe something like that. Um, and then I'll probably just bring out some of the shingles once again, just very lightly. You don't want to overdo this stage. Now here we have that kind of uh, light or electricity pole or whatever that is street light it's not street light sorry well I, I can obviously tell it's not I'm just so focused on the painting that I kind of forget how things work in the real world but in any case that's one that's two that's three and then we're gonna put in plop in that kind of thing and I do want to leave a highlight so I'll just leave it like that probably you could go a little darker. Let's go a little darker here next to its base and put in this very gentle small shadow. The light really comes from the top here. Now it looks a bit skewed due to the uh, angle of the paper. It's not actually that skewed, okay? So if I hold it up, it's gonna get a little clearer. Sorry about that. Um, but in any case, uh, we do have that rooftop at the back that I kind of lost in the details and that's fine. Let's do the windows now. Now it's time for some dry brush. Good old dry brush effect. Get rid of most of the paint off the brush and then try. Give it a try, see what happens. So we get this one window. Probably should be a little more prominent and then another window. That's all you really need. Now there is this gentle line running across the building that I will get. It seems to play an important role in defining the shapes here. Uh, here we actually have a very heavy shadow that I didn't even think about earlier, but I will put it in now Just to maybe make this front rooftop pop a little so I'm gonna need a little more paint for that 
and just place that in here. And hopefully hearing me talk about every single thing I'm doing is one, helpful and two, not too boring. Uh, but I really try to narrate the whole thing as I think it through. Now we have this uh, window at the back. And by the way, I think we hit a nice balance of tutorials and step-by-steps uh, and then some videos that are more fun, short, whimsical, whatever. Um, I'm recording this video in advance, so you'll probably see it while I'm recovering from the deviated septum correction surgery. Um, so that's nice that you have something to, to watch while I'm there. <laughs> Still really nervous about that thing. Now here, I'm going to probably put this using this brush already, so kind of like that. And that, that's it, just a touch. Whatever that does, it does. A lot of it is very random because of the, again, dry brush stroke, but there we go. I'm gonna make this shadow a little stronger and maybe a bit more red here. Just, it feels like that should be a little stronger here, all the way to the front. Now you could indicate a couple of shingles here as well, and it, it will play a good role in um, indicating the shape of the rooftop. Because we did this um, curving shape, then I think it's going to be helpful and useful to put in a couple of shingles like that just to show the direction in which it moves like so. And then on the other one, the same thing, like this. Here, again, kind of very, very gentle, just to get some kind of a depth and, and feeling of, of something that we're looking at. Now, another thing here is these chimneys are a little too light and it's that's fine because I negative painted around them but I will use a bit of red here just to dumb down I'm gonna choose probably a couple of them because I really want to leave one of them let's dumb down this one first we'll see what happens so this part is darker but its left side should be even darker than that so that goes with something like this and hopefully that now makes a little more sense. This one I'm going to leave. I'm going to leave the other ones as is. Just because, I don't know. Uh, and probably, hopefully that'll dry lighter. But I'm still going to pick some of that up. Because I'm afraid it won't. So like that. And hopefully that'll work. Maybe I'll even dab some of it. You know what, let's do that. Okay, so now we're done with this chimney. No overworking it anymore, any longer. Windows. Windows on the front buildings. Let's get a lot of dry paint off the sides, the fringes of the palette, really. Uh, get rid of some of it. I'm gonna have to do some serious cleaning here after I'm done with this painting. Uh, a bit of these two straight out of the well, really. There's a window here, a window there. Just this window here. And um, we have a couple of others. I'm gonna put another one kind of around here. Now we do have the separation between the buildings that I'm considering whether I should add. You know what, let's let's add it and hope for the best. So we do have this kind of a separation here that'll justify this gap here. That, that actually works really well. So I'm good with that. This shadow, just in the shadow now, probably add a bit of drier, darker wash here, here and there. Is this another window, another doorway at the back? Some very uh, dry and empty brush for this parts because I don't want them, them to pop too much and maybe near the edge here. Um, but I actually think that with that we're almost done. I did want to straighten out the shape of that car. This is what I love about these paintings. Now it's all about just straightening out some of the shapes, making sure they look good. Uh, but the, the majority of the work has been done. I want to come back with a very um, almost clean brush and just dumb down these highlights a bit. I used too much water and I don't want it to lift back up some of the paint, so I'm going to do this. I'm going to connect it like so, and that way I'll salvage it. So there's a lot of improvisation going on with watercolor, uh, like so. And I'm going to add a small tiny head to the figure in the background. And in the meantime, you think about what I should add here, even though you can't really tell me. Have a th just think about it. <laughs> Let me know virtually. 
Uh, but for now, I think this actually looks really well. The one thing I could add in, and it's funny enough, I don't even need to deal with this building here. It kind of worked out. Uh, what I think I could add is a bit of directional lines, and you know I love to add these kinds of lines that pull you a little more into the painting. So this could be the tiles on the street or something like that. So I'm just going to pull a couple of them here. There's one goes like this. A bit crooked, not perfect, but that's fine. Another one like that. Another one here maybe. Just trying not to overdo it. And then we're gonna get uh, a bit of that kind of thing going in the other direction here. And hopefully that'll end up working out and making sense. Now you have a bit more of a sense of the ground. Um, one more thing I kind of forgot to add is this figure on the right is holding this um, bag, plastic bag or whatever. I'm gonna add a bit of shadow to that as well. I'll probably have to justify it somehow on the ground so I will say it should be somewhere around here shadow of the bag like this um, one last look this shirt is very light but I actually kind of like it that way so I don't know if I want to change that the one thing I could start adding is just a couple of wires uh, I always mess these up so I'm gonna apologize in advance I'm gonna do my best so we have a couple of them going from here which makes sense because we have that antenna here bit more paint and water like th that here we go a bit more flow I need a bit more water with this mixture like that it's really it can be a bit tricky getting that dry brush effect I'm gonna I'm so gonna mess it up but let's go for it so that's one that's two luckily I didn't mess it up too much we have these ones as well like this, this is one, this is two, this is three, done. I don't need any more of those. Um, a couple of details here on the tree could be nice. Just a bit of green, like that. A bit of, you know, kind of twigs and, and branches, random different things. Um, and I think with that, we'll actually be able to wrap it up. There is this part that goes a little darker at the bottom of the walls. It could be nice, you know what, let's try and, let's take a risk here. I'm gonna use very, uh, a very gray mixture to get that in. So a bit of red now, you know what, I like it that way. Let's go for it and see what happens because that'll create a nice separation between the sidewalk and the building and that'll cover up that mess up from earlier. So let's see what we get here. So it just goes like this into the uh, perspective. And it probably darkens up that left section as well, like this. And I think that ended up working nicely, kind of like this. Maybe even around that, and this will bring out the shape of the car. You know what? That looks really good. I'm, I'm super pleased with myself right now. I didn't think it will work, but it did work. Um, and just one final touch. That's going to be the last brush stroke here. And can you guess what it's going to be? It's going to be this part of the car at the back that should be a little darker. All the way here, all the way here, under that part, and this is it. This one is done. So this is it. I really hope you enjoyed this process. I just did one last step, which is to add these uh, dry brush marks in the shadow, but I think there's a lot to learn about uh, painting from this process, mainly about merging shapes. By merging the shapes, you simplify the experience for the viewer, they know what to focus on, where their eye should move towards, uh, and it just makes the whole um, viewing of the painting, this whole experience much more interesting. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked it and found it helpful, don't forget to give it a like. Uh, that helps YouTube to promote it to more people. And also, if you still haven't, please subscribe to my channel. I have tons of other processes like this one. And I will see you again in another vid real soon.